Hello everybody and welcome along to GCN Does With. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is a global community taking part in a virtual race online, so welcome along. Yep, the race has already started. We're a minute in. An amazing amount of people have logged on to Zwift today. It has caused one or two problems, but regardless of that, the race is underway, and some of the speeds we're seeing being hit at the moment are absolutely unbelievable. We knew that it would start off fast, but it's absolutely tremendous. The race is tearing itself to shreds, but let's talk right now about the course itself. It's the figure of eight circuit, which means two laps of the flat circuit and two laps of the hilly Watopia circuit, the other way around. So a fascinating circuit in prospect. It is a very tough circuit. It doesn't incorporate the epic KOM which comes on the south side of the island. But as Matt said, this is a figure of eight loop, just under 30 kilometres in length for the entire race, which is over 18 miles. And in total, they'll be dealing with 234, uh, should I say, metres of elevation gains. So there are plenty of opportunities for the riders strong on the flat and also those who like to give it a nudge on the climbs. Now, unfortunately, due to the, the, the demand on that, we've had I mean, over 1,000, 1,100 people wanted to register for this race. Due to the demand, we've had a couple of technical issues, which unfortunately means that Simon's paperwork didn't go through on the line. He's not in the field at the moment, but we still have an absolutely fantastic race in prospect. So sorry for Simon not being there. There'll be another time for Simon. There were some rumours that he had got himself on a boat instead of a plane to get himself to Watopia Island, which is quite a hard place to get yourself to. But let's concentrate on the race for a few moments' time because, as you said, Matt, it has started off at an extremely fierce pace. We're currently watching some of the rides in the front group. It's still a lot of rides in there, but you can see a clear gap between the first 30 or 40 riders and the rest of the people in the race. Yeah, about a group of 30 or 40 riders has now gone clear. And I think at this early point in the race, just as they head down Ocean Boulevard, those of you watching can see they're actually travelling underwater at the moment and this is one of the flattest parts of the circuit. That The race is actually split into four categories. We can see the lead group on the road at the moment, but worth explaining that there's four categories, A, B, C and D, out on the road. Yep, and Group A is the elite riders. To be a part of Group A, you need to have a watts per kilo ratio or a power to weight ratio of over four watts per kilo. So that is a very elite group indeed. And that's what we're going to be mainly focusing on through tonight's live race with GCN. Group B is for people that have 3.2 up to 3.99 watts per kilo. Group C 2.5 up to 3.19 and Group D is for anybody who currently has a power to weight ratio of less than 2.49 watts per kilo and that is basically where Matt and I would be racing if we weren't so good at commentary. Indeed I'd rather be sat here than sweating at the moment but uh, rider, no clear rider has made a lead at the moment. We saw actually one rider has gone in front Bath Salts from Canada is in the front. Very interesting name there. Certainly going to be salty at the end of this race. Some really high speeds. People just washing over. Of course, the wonderful thing about Zwift, it is like, it's a, it's a platform like no other, isn't it? It's worth saying here, anybody, anyone out there watching that are new to this, the riders in the peloton here will be feeling the slipstreaming effect that actually fell out on the open road, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, they certainly will. It's as realistic as you can possibly get in a virtual cycling world. So as you said, we will be able to take advantage of slipstreaming behind other riders, and that makes tactics very important in this race. You don't want to go off too fast and then not be able to keep the wheel a little bit later on, especially when it starts to kick uphill. So you need to have something in reserve if you want to try and win or come in the top 10 of a race like this. Well, they're just heading up. Ocean Boulevard. Soon they'll go through the biodome, they'll head straight over, then start swinging right, and then about a kilometre later they'll start the reverse circuit of Watopia Island, and that's where the climbs will start to kick in. And at this point in the race, you can just see now the riders just going On over these, the dust, all the dust kicking up, remarkably realistic. And just look at some of the wattages up here. Early on in the race, we saw wattages of 10 watts per kilogram. It almost started off like a Criterium or a cyclocross race. Yeah, but uh, we are expecting this to take somewhere in the region of 40 minutes for the best riders out on course today. Going back to the categories, don't try and cheat on Zwift because I can tell you that they have Zada. And that stands for the Zwift Anti-Doping Agency. So if you start to flag some very good rides, they will be on to you checking out your real-time and real-life 
Strava data to make sure that you are indeed telling the truth about your weight, etc., and not trying to mess with your power meter or your home trainer. So don't be trying to cheat on Zwift. Also worth noting that on the different categories here, if you do an exceptional performance, you will be given a graduation up to the next category. So that's certainly something to look towards. Well, most of the riders in this league group at the moment, Dan, look at the leader here, Jay Tarach of Team PL, averaging 5.8 watts per kilo. The rider just behind, 5.8 watts per kilo. And then we have a raft of riders hovering around 4.5 to 5.5 watts per kilo. And in real terms, Dan, that is basically maxed out. This is going to be riding at threshold or even beyond threshold, even this early in the race. Yeah, and hopefully the riders will get to recover from going into the red by getting back in the wheels after the climbs or after doing an effort on the front. As you can see, the groups are still very much bunched together at the moment. The riders on the front will be putting out more power than those in the wheels. But as you can see, it is starting to whittle down a little bit already as we come into the early stage of this race. Just six minutes and 20 seconds completed, so around about 34 minutes minutes still to go. 5.4 kilometers done. That is an incredible average speed for the opening few minutes of this race. Worth noting as well that, as per usual, we do have some GCN swag to give away, not just to riders that are out on the course who we deem worthy of something like a wattage bazooka t-shirt or hoodie, but also for those of you in the Look comments, that. we're going to be reading out a few of the comments from all over the world. So make sure that you do come on Facebook and YouTube. Tell us where you're tuning in from. If we read your name out, it's not necessarily for a prize, but if we tell you there's a prize there too, send us your address and we'll get that off to you as soon as possible. And if you do like the look of any of this swag, make sure you head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com to get some for yourself. Well, action in the race so far. Things have settled down a little bit. We're going to start to go up some of the first climbs. Around 25 to 30 riders in this lead group at the moment. Uh, B. Bonifatz is uh, leading at the moment from Team ODZ. And I think it's worth mentioning right now, as we just start to get a little bit of a rhythm, is to identify down some of the top riders here, because we have some of the finest Swift riders in the world in the field today, and a couple of notable professional riders as well. Yeah, I think we've already mentioned one or two, but there are a few riders who we've been focusing on pre-race, the most experienced Swift racers out there, who between them have done something like a thousand races, and that's only for eight riders. A good friend of mine, actually, is somebody we're going to be looking out for, Kim Little, based in Shaftesbury in the UK. I've ridden with him before, he's mainly a favourite of mountain biker, but I I think he can go well here on the road as well. He certainly does a lot of Zwifting. He's from the UK. He has got a, a, an FTP of 339 watts at 70 kilos. So he's certainly somebody who can be up there with the best. And one or two riders now getting pinged from this group. He's getting whittled down all of the time. I'd estimate they're down around 25 riders still in this front group. We're getting some wonderful aerial shots now. They're just going over the bridge and it'll be the first climb of the day. Remember, the first time they hit the traditional Watopia circuit that many of you will be very familiar with, they're actually doing it the other way around. Then they'll return onto the flat circuit and the final lap of today's race is the traditional direction around the Watopia circuit. One of you, well, one circuit that many of you would no doubt be very, very familiar with. Remember that final climb with about one and a half kilometers to go is where things could really kick off without a shadow of doubt. Unless, of course, anybody decides to go long but to go along on a course like this, with the quality of the field, Dan, it's a tall order, isn't it? Yeah, and it is worth mentioning, as you said, Matt, that this is just one of the courses which you can use if you decide to use Zwift. They've got this one, which you can do in various formations around Watopia Island, but they've also got the Richmond World Championships course, where, of course, Peter Sagan and Lizzie Armistead took the rainbow bands around about 18 months ago. And they've also got the Ride London Surrey Classic course, which goes over the Box Hill Climb, which is one of the most used climbs here in the UK, for rides and on Strava, etc. So there is a wide range of courses and more to come too. Well, De well uh, our very own Simon Richardson did actually pop across to Zwift headquarters, didn't he, to look behind the scenes. You can check that video out on our channel as well. And they gave a little sneaky peek of a new circuit that actually goes inside a volcano. Wow. That sounds interesting. It certainly does. Okay, some comments coming in on YouTube to start with. Punky Shippy says, Don't tell my boss, but I'm watching this at work. Good work. Elvis Seven, boys, are you taking bets? Well, not actually. If Sai was actually racing, we'd be taking bets on him for the win. I think it would be very short odds given his pedigree on Zwift. Not only did he win this previous Zwift race that we did online, but he also, with my help, beat Jens Vogt, who's very eager for a rematch, I think it has to be said. We understand there's going to be a rematch later this year. That should be absolutely fascinating. But what is fascinating, this group out in front, 2025 20, riders strong, Dan. Just look at some of the powers here. 
6.7 watts per kilogram, 7 watts per kilogram. Look at this, really thinning this front group out. We've got F. Buckrod of the KISS team in front there. M. Worthington as well from the KISS A team from Great Britain is there. 8.3 kilometres deep into the race, and there's some real gaps opening amongst uh, the forerunners now. Yeah, there are a few very strong teams <clears> out there, so it'll be interesting to see whether they really work together in this race. We have Team Experiment, who are very big on the Zwift races, as you mentioned, Team Kiss, but also Team Vision have a few very strong riders as well. Try and see if Nathan Guerra has turned up to this race. That was the rider who Cy beat in the race just over one year ago. He has a huge pedigree in mountain biking in the real world, but there's a lot of Zwifting and general virtual reality as well. Apparently Nathan Guerra, well into Pokemon. We're talking of riders. Um, let's have a look through the, uh, some of the other main riders. We've got Sean Gray from the UK, FTP of 338 uh, watts, has ridden 84 races on Zwift. That really is some pedigree. Dafford Williams, also of the UK, 112 races under his belt, 290 watts. Then we've also got Steve Fleetwood. He's definitely one to watch out for. 88 races under his belt, 313 watts, riding 73 kilograms. He rides for Team Vision. Okay, some more comments coming in on YouTube. We have Matt Robinson, who claims that he raced against Cy in the youth category, which well, was a long time ago, actually, it Matt, wasn't was it? was a long I mean, yeah, it was a long time ago. Uh, we also had a comment from Geordie Cyclist Matt, who said, uh, oh, sorry, Geordie Cyclist said, Matt is drinking beer, and Dan is drinking water. What is this? Are you okay, Dan? Well, I'm actually not even having a dry January. I'm trying to have a week off the beer, hence the water in a nice, clear GCN pint glass whilst I jealously watch Matt drink beer. And along the same lines, we also had a com comment from Mark Malloy. If Carlsberg did commentators, probably wouldn't look like this. It probably wouldn't look like this, would it? But uh, front of the group at the moment, I'm just trying to look who took the mountain judge. It's, Bonif it's uh, Bonifazzi. You took That's a name that yeah, rings Nicola a bell. Bonifazio, it's currently not, in the Tour Down Under. Yeah, he's right. Managing to, obviously he's got it in his pocket as well, or he's asleep. Oh, he's got his turbo set up in his bedroom, or his hotel room, and he's on Zwift. But I doubt it. But just looking ahead of this group now, Dan, look, what do you reckon? 15 to 20 riders only as they crest the king of the mountains. Now it's Jay Wolf who just goes over the top, representing Germany, closely followed by F. Kopex of Switzerland. Some immense powers as they crest the climb. Three or four riders just hanging back. But once you do get dropped from the group, because of that lack of slipstreaming that you benefit from when you are in a group, it's very, very hard to make up that lost ground. Yeah, it certainly is. If you do slip off the back in what looks like very much a race of attrition, and it's not necessarily game over, but if you have gone into the red, it's going to be very hard to pick up the pace and get back into the wheels where you can recover slightly. This is the big downhill on this part of the course. Yeah, this is the big downhill, as, as you say, Dan, heading towards the finish line. This is the way they'll be climbing on the final lap. This is the reverse of the traditional Watopia circuit. And as I say, just trying to look at the composition of that group, some really, really good riders in there. Still about 20 riders strong. One or two riders have managed to get back into contact. And a real variety of bikes there, lots of Zwift bikes. A few GCN jerseys in the mix as well. And I must admit, I do like the rider on the low profile bike there with the fluorescent wheels. So they are now 11.1 kilometers through this race, which means they have just under 19 kilometers remaining. So not yet at the halfway marks. So there's still lots of racing still to go and GCN does Zwift. 13 minutes and 43 seconds. They've completed 87 meters of elevation so far. And let's not forget, it's a total of 234 meters. So they've still got a good bit of climbing to come. And of course the climbing is slow. They've got another flat section that outward leg along the Ocean Boulevard when it went under the ocean. It almost looked like some giant aquarium. They've got to go back through that route again, although there are a couple of quite deceptive drags on that flat circuit as you drop down and go underwater before resurfacing again. They'll be going through the finish line for the very first time in just a few meters time. You can just see the finish gantry. They've just gone through there. They whizzed through and now they'll be going up Again, still in the reverse direction of the traditional uh, Watopia circuit before, before flicking back on to the flatter circuit. What a race we have in prospect over the closing 18 kilometres of this race. Now, if you have just joined our live commentary and live broadcast of GCN Does Zwift, you might be wondering where a certain Cy Richardson is. Well, we had so many entries at the start line that the organisers were struggling to get them all with numbers on their backs. So a couple of technical issues, which means he's not a part of the race tonight. Uh, I know a number of you out there who wanted to join the Zwift race tonight weren't 
able to. We promise we will get it right next time. But in the meantime, let's focus on the racing that we do have in hand because some very good quality riders out there. And one is making a huge attack right now. Well, this is the first major attack of the day. It's B. Sito of Team PL from Poland. He attacked just after the finish line. And has now himself, well, he's uh, unlocked several achievements here. He's got a two-second lead at the moment, which is really saying something. One or, two tr one or two riders trying to get across the gap. Bonifaz, he's in the mountains jersey. Ogoran Merkea of France is also there. And then we've got a big group of riders at five and six seconds. That attack, Dan, has really set the cat amongst the pigeons. But can he stay clear? This is that roller coaster section of the course now before they start dropping down again. Well, I wouldn't say that this is a race-winning move. Possibly not, but the power that he's holding right now is in the region of 500 watts. We haven't got any weight data for our current leader, but heart rate's still only 161, so depending on what his max heart rate is, he still seems well within himself. He's got a decent lead now. A couple of riders trying to make their way across to our lone leader, the rest of the group flagging somewhat behind. We've got a lovely uh, profile of... Uh Mr. or Mrs. P. B. Sito here of Team PL, out of the saddle there, rides for the in, oh, he's got the in gamba kit on, but is well clear now, he's got a second over K van Goit of TK.be of Belgium, and it looks as if he's just about to be reabsorbed by the peloton, he has now been caught, the bunch have caught him, but he must have gone very, very deep, that's quite an early effort to make, perhaps testing the waters, and there he is, just on the back of the group, having to accelerate to get back into contact. Well, we have got some more comments coming in from YouTube, and not long from now, we'll be going to give away our first piece of GCN swag, and I'm going to make that this clear GCN Camelback water bottle. So keep sending your comments in. Make sure you let us know where you're commenting in from and watching from as well, and in the next few minutes, I will decide which one of you lucky people is going to get one of them. Definitely. Well, meanwhile, just looking back on the profile here, another one of these, these drags, Leader at the moment is uh, Kay Little. We mentioned him earlier on. One of the uh, one of the favourites for this race, but this elite group now forming. Slowly things are starting to settle down. But I say settling down, Dan. Just look at some of these powers here on this downhill section. Still over four watts per kilogram. Some on five as well. There's B. Sito, our early attacker. Took him 20 odd minutes or, or so. Sorry, 17 or 16 minutes before he attacked right in the middle of the bunch here. That, I think, is the advisable place. Stay in this front group. All about conserving as much energy as possible. I think this last lap, Dan, is really going to explode. It certainly is. And looking at the distance that they've covered, 14 and a half kilometres, they're not far now from the halfway point in distance of this race. And having covered it in less than 18 minutes, I'm wondering whether the Strava lap record might be up for grabs today. I was looking on Strava earlier to see who the fastest rider was. Kenny Liao is currently the best in a time of 37 minutes and 17 seconds. So certainly there could be some upset on the Strava leaderboards at the end of this GCN does Zwift race. Well, definitely. They're just passing through now the Italian village. They've gone over the bridge. This is where they hit that cobbled section. And another one of the features of Zwift, aside from climbing, descending, freewheeling and slipstreaming, you actually get the added resistance when you ride across the pave as well. So they'll just snake through the Italian village, past the waterfall you can just see on the right-hand side. Then they'll swing left. Then they'll turn right to head back onto the Ocean Boulevard part of the circuit. Lovely view there. And what do you reckon, Dan? Still about 25 riders, I think, in that front group. Yeah, it seems to have expanded slightly on the flatter section here. A few riders managing to get back on terms with this group. It's certainly a very picturesque circuit, which includes a bit of everything. Some technical descents, some flat sections, some tunnels, and, of course, some climbing as well. So something there for everybody. And it's still very much open in terms of who could take the win here. And I'm really looking forward to seeing if there are any team tactics coming in here towards the end of the race. We are in the closing half of the race now with almost 16 kilometers covered they've had 138 meters of elevation gain which means they've got less than 100 uh, meters to go and they're still hovering at around 50 kilometers per hour which really is quite incredible i have got my first prize to give away it is from a comment which came in on YouTube from 1975 Lap. I ride Zwift six days a week. For the love of goodness, Ooh. give me a prize, please. I don't currently own a water bottle. I get so thirsty from cold Wisconsin, USA. Well, you are going to get a bottle, but I will warn all other commenters that this is the final time that a direct request for give me a prize gets a prize. You now yeah. have to be clever with your comments. Yeah, I think that's just a little bit too... Yeah. It's a little bit lazy, you want, really. Would you mean, like to I'll, rescind the prize? I'll be, I'm not going to rescind it because that, would, that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be cricket, really. And after all, this is cycling. 
don't know why that was going to a perfect honest No. Way. Let's name check some of the people in this front group, some of whom you may be familiar with. We've got M. Swart of the United States in there. We've got A. Loxy in the mix as well from Great Britain. A. Gangon of Canada is in there. Somebody called S. Hedgehog. think that might be a fake name. They're also from the United Kingdom. Sonic. We've got, yeah, A. a Serop is there from Norway. Got a couple of French riders in there. A. Pien of France and S. Jabert of France. J. Bank of the United States. A real international flavour on Zwift in this lead group tonight. OK, we're also getting some messages in from Facebook, one of which comes in from Andy Shepherd, who says he'll take a bet on me not making a dry week. Well, I am willing to take that bet on because I'm already over halfway, four days in. But let's get back to the racing, shall we? Well, look at this. This Polish rider, B City, was absolutely full of fight. Uh, don't know if he's spending his pennies a little bit too early, but he's gone clear. He's now taken a second. He's riding at the moment, Dan, as we speak, hovering between... Seven and eight watts per kilogram. That is going to eat into his reserves. But maybe he's trying to pull the group clear. This is the second attack in around two and a half kilometers. Still a long way to go, but clearly feeling very, very strong. Now three seconds in front. Yeah, that is a daring attack. And you do have to wonder if he's going to pay for this fairly shortly. Even the likes of Gilbert and Greg Van Avermaet can only hold that watts per kilo for a few minutes at a time. He's going to want to get some recovery, but he's not going to be able to sit on any rides as he's out front solo at the moment. 400 watts is roughly what he's keeping and 50 kilometers per hour as he goes back onto the dirt road. Well, he's dropped down to 3.2 watts per kilogram and the bunch is being led by Great Britain and Norway. Another rider just come to the front, TJ of Germany. Now K Little pulls on the front, trying to bring back the flying pole. They're just going past the wind farm there. You can see the lovely sun reflecting on the ocean. And oh, it looks he's as been caught. Yep. As we expect, he has paid for that effort of going into the red. Eight watts per kilo was ambitious at that point. Still over 10 kilometres to go, so it's a question now as to whether he can even manage to sit on the back of this group for the remainder of the race. <coughs> Sorry. I shall continue to commentate, stop. Matt, whilst you get that nut <laughs> out of your throat. Uh, just that. a reminder to those of you who've just joined us, Cy Richardson was supposed to be oh. doing... Mind that you you're getting beer everywhere. <laughs> It's all going wrong. <laughs> I'm running some uh, tissue, guys. Yeah, if you just joined us, Cy Richardson was supposed to be a part of this race, but he's been unable to take part due, some t due to some technical issues which we experienced on the start line. We had such an overwhelming response in terms of Incredible. entries and people wanted to take part in tonight's race that it was unable to cope with it. But we will get this right next time, we promise. And keep watching, because this is still going to be a very fascinating race. One which Cy Richardson would definitely be at the head of affairs of, but nevertheless, let's see who wins tonight. 18.8 kilometres done, which means they have just over 10 kilometres still to go. Still some climbing to go, <coughs> 23 minutes of racing done. Well, they're back under Ocean Boulevard now, heading back towards Watopia Pier for the final time, and then they will head, well, then they'll finish this race with one lap of Watopia Island and that I think Dan will be the lap that most of these riders are familiar with that's the most common lap that is used of course we're not exploring the Zwift Alps another amazing feature of, of Zwift you can head over into the mountains you're climbing for 10 or 15 minutes on a seven kilometer climb which maxes out I think at around 15 percent done that a few times myself maybe we'll see a race up the mountains in the future focusing on the Watopia Island part of the circuit today and as I said, the final lap will be the ones where these rides are really going to think about their tactics. It will be interesting to see how much BC2 has got in the tank. He's just hit the front again, taking the win of the other riders. Yeah, slight stalemate there in the front group at the moment. Everyone of a similar level. And it depends on their endurance, I guess, as to how far through this race they can get. And everyone's now going to be thinking about when they're going to make their move. They don't want to go too long, but we are inside nine kilometres to go. So people will start to think about their tactics. If they haven't got a great sprint, they're going to have to to make their move a little bit earlier and it might be they get together with one two three other riders try and form an alliance which takes them all the way to the finish line at which point they can fight it out for what is going to be a very prestigious victory indeed well before they hit uh, the well the penultimate climb of the day things have slowed down a little bit i have a feeling dan that these riders now are sort of resting up have kept their powder dry one or two riders have had tentative attacks i think they're just waiting now and until they hit that climb, but after the first climb, there's still around seven kilometres still to go, and with about a kilometre and a half to go, there's a very short 600 metre sting in the tail, and that could be where the decisive break is made. 
Okay, I've got one more prize to give away now, and this time it is going to be one of the red GCN Camelback bottles, and it goes to Vikram Nakanti. <clears throat> he says, think about us over in India, it's two in the morning, I've got an interview with Amazon tomorrow, and you give me a very compelling reason not to sleep. Well done for staying up, thanks for joining us. Get in touch on Facebook with your address, and we'll get the uh, GCN Camelback bottle sent out to you very soon indeed. Do you know the one thing that I've learned today, Dan? What? Never eat nuts during a commentary. Yeah. And also, never slam a bottle of beer on a table because it tends too. to overflow and erupt. I can't believe my MacBook's still alive, to be perfectly honest, but thankfully it is, and we've got <laughs> a lovely feed here. But moving on, Robert. Let's show your notes. Back to the race. Just, that's no use anymore, mate. Let's get back to the race. We're into, we're into the last 10, 15 minutes of the race. They'll soon emerge onto uh, out of Ocean Boulevard. They're just, I think, they're out of the, the final part of the tunnels now. And just in the distance, you can see the Ferris wheel. Just to the left of the Ferris wheel is where the start-finish area is. They'll swing left before going back through the start-finish to ride the final circuit in the traditional way. Lots of riders now positioning themselves, making sure they've got pole position as they hit the main climb of the day, and that's going to only come in about two or three minutes' time. But it's an interesting climb down, isn't it? Because it's very, very steep at the bottom. Then you've got that uh, plateau false frat halfway up, and it drags all the way to the line, and there's no real discernible descent. Yeah, it's definitely one of those climbs where it is actually probably quite favourable to go slightly into the red at the bottom, keep some of your momentum going, and then you can relax slightly as the gradient tails off. Coming up is another prize for somebody in gameplay, and this is a GCN Wattage Bazooka T-shirt. And I think we have to give this to that tremendous attack from a few kilometres ago. Oh, Andy definitely. Bezo. If you're watching now, or if you're watching this post, or if you know him, get in contact and tell him to contact us, because he is thoroughly deserving of a Wattage Bazooka T-shirt. Dan, we're on the foot slopes of the penultimate climb of the day, and it's uh, Bonifatz of Canada who's gone clear. Kim Stop. Little in second place. Kim Little on his wheel there. F. Van Kiss is in third position, but it's uh, Bonnie Fats. Look at him, he's on the low, he's riding a TT bike. He and he's, uh, well, absolutely buzzing up this climb. 7.6 watts per kilo. Could this be the decisive moment of this very prestigious GCN Does Zwift race? It, it's really starting to string out now. You can see the gaps opening up between riders as they're no longer able to take advantage of slipstreaming. Once the gradient rears its ugly head and the speed's slow, it's every man for themselves pretty much. And we're now starting to see the cream of the crop coming to the top. I tell you what, that effort there by Bonifat has put a massive gap into F Van uh, Kiss, who's second at six seconds. Six seconds he's stolen in about 500 metres of riding. There's a cluster of riders just behind. We've got Kay Little, who's now in, in third place at eight seconds, and a group of riders at 15 and 16 seconds. The early attack of B-Situ of Poland is sitting in about fifth position, but the rider out in front, tapping out the steady rhythm, riding at around five watts per kilo after that real hard surge at the start of the climb is Bonifatz. This is looking very, very good. He's holding a four-second lead. He's certainly looking incredibly smooth, and he's keeping that power high, isn't he? 350 watts is around about where he's hovering. He's certainly working hard. 175 is where he's got his heart rate up to at the moment. Prefers a slightly lower cadence, 80 RPM, so on the lower end of the scale for someone with that amount of power. But he certainly seems to be using it very very well indeed. Very much a bit of clear daylight there between himself and the rest of the riders behind as he comes up to the KO endpoint. Well, uh, uh, B. Bonifat of Team ODZ of Canada about to crest the top of this climb. How much of a lead is he going to have over the second place rider? The rider from Belgium, I think, has closed a little bit of a gap and there's a cluster of riders in between. Actually, the Belgian now has got in contact, goes wow. straight to the front, didn't even sit on the wheel, went straight past the Canadian. Certainly a case of pacing there on the climb. He let the rider at the front there take the lead, but he's come straight past him. F.VN of Kiss Racing is now in the lead of this race with around about six kilometres still remaining, so it's not over yet. And even more interesting, the F Van Kiss, who's in the lead, is riding in Global Cycling Network. Kick, you could not make this up, Dan. We didn't, did we? We didn't. We just early. No, didn't. no, this is definitely just this, met is, him. this is a real race going I know he's on right virtual, now. But he's, he's, he likes our kit. It is really. great to see our kit out the front of this race right now. Uh, we will do another GCM bottle to Daniel Del Real, who said, "I wish I had a GCM bottle so I could give you a drink of water." Don't know what to say to that, really. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's, so another, I see. there's a counter attack. Uh, it looks like the leader now is uh, still Little is in second place. I think the rider in front has been caught. It's Kay Little now, Dan, who's gone to the front. There's a bit of a, bit of a ceasefire here. 
This is an opportunity on the course just to rest, recuperate, sit in the wheels a little bit, allowing several riders to get back on. There's about one, two, about seven or eight riders now forming in this front group, and the pace really now has backed off. There's one significant sting in the tail, and that's the climb down with about two k's to go. But this is still very, very open. Yeah, I'm sure all the riders back there at home are now in the red. They're starting to think, how can we possibly win this race in front of all of these viewers who are tuning in from all over the place in the world this evening for this GC? and does Zwift race. How many riders have we got left in this front group? There are around about 10, maybe just under 10 riders still here. But a couple of riders maybe give a chance to get back on just behind at the moment because you can see a few of them in the distance, but it does seem to be between these riders now. Well, there really is a big gap. There's a, uh, a there's this group of about eight or nine riders. Then we have a TJ or Rudd riders from Kiss from Germany at three seconds. Then we have two riders in no man's land, really. Aorane TFC of the UK and J Post of America at seven and nine seconds. And then, Dan, it's a big gap to a big group of riders who are now hovering around half a minute behind. So it appears to me, unless they really take their feet off the gas and start finessing, cat and mousing, whatever you want to call it, the win today is going to be between this group of riders. It very much looks that way. And let's hope they don't have any punctures or mechanicals in the closing stage. That would be disastrous, wouldn't it? 24.6 kilometres covered, 31 minutes and 5 seconds so far. I certainly think that the Strava record is still on. And could it go to this man, Kim Little, a friend of mine who I've ridden with in the real world, lives in Shaftesbury in the UK. He is now solo on the front, pushing 300 watts. Heart rate still very comfortable, though, 148 beats per minute. Well, he's been joined by but the Polish rider early on who was, uh, you know, did those two quite devastating attacks. We'll see how much those uh, attacks have eaten into his reserves. He was the rider who neutralised that attack by your friend in both the virtual world and the real world. Still all together, this little front group here. B Suter was there. C Beck is there of America. Little we've already, already mentioned from the UK. A Gangon of uh, Canada is also there. K Van Gate of Belgium. A Gar Merkia of uh, Fr France is also there. And of course, we already mentioned B Suter of Poland. Who, Dan, is it going to be? Who well, has played their cards to perfection? This really is edge-of-your-seat stuff, isn't it? They're down onto the flatter roads now, and it's a time to take advantage of some slipstream and take a final drink both in the virtual world and on your trains at home before you get ready for the final push to the line because there's still nine or ten riders very much in with a chance this race. A number of them getting out of the saddle for this short, small rise that goes up to 3.5%. Possibly a chance to launch a move, but it looks like everyone's looking at each other at the moment. Well, it just uh, meanders around this right hand. It dr dips down a little bit. Then it got a short drag. Then it will drop down. And then after about a kilometre of riding on the flat, we go across the JWB bridge. And then we head into the traditional S's. But there's one short, sharp climb to go. All of these riders would know it very well. They're all very experienced as Zwift riders, many of them with up to 100 races under their belt. It's B. Sito on the front at the moment. Bonifaz of Canada is sitting just behind him. S. Harmer is there, a rider we haven't mentioned from the United States. One or two little tentative attacks. Two riders just floating off the front at the moment. B. Sito and Bonifaz are the riders in pole position. Now, if this has taken your fancy, you never experienced Zwift before. If you want to give it a go, it is, in fact, very easy indeed. All you need is a home trainer and a speed sensor with Ant Plus technology. At that point, Zwift can calculate Z power for you, and you can become a part of this game. It does become far more immersive if you do invest in a smart trainer, because at that point, when you get to a climb, the resistance will kick in, and when you get to a downhill, you will be going a lot easier for a higher speed. So, worth doing that, but it is extremely easy to get into, and you can do a free trial with Zwift as well if you want to give it a try out. Well, they've just gone past the waterfall down over the pave section through the Italian village. Then there's a small chicane. And then traditionally on this circuit, if you're just riding training on it, there is a timed sprint section. That's not going to be applicable today. This is all about the rod that is first across the line. And it looks as if they backed off a little bit. Although saying that, some of these washes are still very, very high. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine riders in this front group. Who's it going to be? Because they've got 300 metres to go to the end of this sprint, but as they pass over the footbridge and then swing right, that's when the gradient really kicks up. Then they've got a very difficult climb, about 500 metres long. 
just after this wooden bridge. Two riders from Canada in the lead group, two riders from Poland, one from Great Britain. We've got two from the USA, a Frenchman and a Belgian as well. So lots of nationalities represented in this front group of nine. Still all to play for. We're just coming up towards two kilometres to go. And one of the people is using their power up right now. That feather means that they are now a bit lighter than normal for the next 30 seconds. So it looks like they're going to be launching their attacks. In fact, a number of them have saved their power ups for the crucial moment of the race. They certainly have our, uh, our board on the right hand side is flashing in red and that means these rods are apps were pushing out incredible wattages 11 watts per kilo kilogram from oh van der but it's the belgian k van gate who's in front but still four riders on the same time there's no real daylight they're already at the top of this small climb this is the very difficult roller coaster section before the drag down to the finish line this is where the road drops, rises, drops, rises on several occasions. Very, very difficult to get into any sort of discernible rhythm. This is a tough part of the circuit, Dan. Yeah, and you can see that aerodynamic helmet icon there now in the blue. That means that that rider is going to be more aero than normal for a 30-second period. So a few of them using their power-ups up. It'll be interesting to see if any have saved it for the closing kilometre of the race, which could be extremely crucial. Gap starting to open up, though, now. It's Kim Little who's countered a move by B. Situ as you were describing the the, the composition of the group there. It's uh, Kim Little has now gone clear. He's now being caught by Bath Salts. Let's have a little, let's go back up. I think we've got some, some wrong information there. Bonifat is still in the lead. And Bonifat still in the lead there. But this is absolutely incredible as we head into the last, well, the last kilometre, 1,200 metres of this race. Well, still nine riders fighting it out for the win in this group. So let's see who's got the legs left to launch a final attack up towards the finish line. A very prestigious race, as we've already mentioned. And I think, you know, I might award another What is Bazooka prize to the first rider across the line. Because although we've given a T-shirt away, should I say, to Bisto uh, for his attack a few moments ago, we still do have a What is Bazooka hoodie. Make this one quick, Dan. We've got about 600 metres to go, mate, to right, the end of the I'll race. Let's take it in towards the line. <laughs> Here we go. This Kay Little offer. is leading out. Seabeck is just on his wheel. The reason I was a bit confused, we're actually lapping some riders who are nearly eight minutes down, Dan. That's what the, uh, the confusion was. Little is on the front, putting out nearly 15 watts per kilogram. Tarach is on his wheel. Beck is there. Garan now takes the lead. Who is it going to be? It looks like Bisto has now taken the lead. Wow, this is a big sprint towards the finish line. Four riders together there, but there's one lone leader with a small advantage. Can he hold it onto the line now? over 30 kilometers raced. This is a fantastic surge to the line. It looks like it's little on the front at the moment. Who's it going to be that's going to take the win? They have just crossed the line. Incredible. Just round the final corner here. It looks like it was Gangon who took the win. Was it uh, Beck? We'll get confirmation of that in just a few moments time. They did actually overtake a few lapped riders as they crossed the line. But that was an absolutely amazing sprint to the finish line. Some of the washes there, Dan. Well, I've never gone anywhere near some of those uh, sprint washes. Absolutely amazing. And we've got confirmation of the winner in just a few moments' time. And I think it was a Gangon who took the win. Yeah, getting confirmation of, of the results after a potential photo finish. But it does go to show you when the cream of the crop rise to the top, it is the difference between going into the red and suffering and going into the red and being able to still lift it in the closing kilometre of the race. And that was some sprint finish amongst that group of nine. Very little to separate them over the closing stage of the race or the entire race, really. Well, after that descent, after the roller coaster section, you've got that descent, then the road does actually kick up discernibly all the way to the line. So it's about the rides that can hold that power Power, but riders spread, it just shows the high quality of this race, riders spread all over this Watopia circuit. But uh, again, we'll get confirmation in just a few moments time who was the out and out winner of the race. Well, thank you very much to everybody who has joined us on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live for our GCN Does Zwift event. We hope you have enjoyed our coverage and also our commentary. Uh, there were a few technical issues at the start, which we'll be working on before we do this again. So apologies if you did want to join the race and you weren't able to do so. Don't give up because there will be more coming in the not too distant future.
points, which might be a big amount of points or a lesser amount of points. And as I said, once you accumulate them, you can then afford to buy the various upgrades to your kit, some of which are free, which includes the GCN kit, which is for free right from the very beginning, but you get the aerodynamic wheels and the aero bikes, and so you can choose exactly how you look online. Well, Dan, I'm just going to dab you because that was a sweaty affair. These towels, by the way, are available in the GCN shop. Are they really? Strangely enough. But what I'm going to do, here's some nuts, have some beer. I'm going to go and just see if I can get the results back in two moments. OK, we will be wrapping things up in a very short period of time. Hopefully, Matt can get the results for us, but I will read a couple more comments out before we get to that particular moment, if I can get to them. Uh, Carl Butler, did the peloton just pass Matt trying to clip in? Well, this is one of the reasons why Matt does love Zwift so much, because his virtual online avatar character is clipped in constantly, and when he does need to set off, he's clipped in instantly. So that's why he tends to favour that over general training these days. Uh, we also had a comment in from George Mahoney, who said, Matt is the Attenborough of the cycling world. We can't both be because we had John Chocolate Voice Bevan described as the uh, Attenborough <laughs> of the cycling Voice world. Bevan. So one of you needs to decide. Well, Dan, we've got com we're just going to get the top three in a few moments' time. We've had confirmation from our producers that Kim Little is the winner. Your mate. Kim Little won. Yeah, well done, won Kim. I it can deliver the What is Bazooka hoodie personally. in person. It's well, on my commute back from work. Well, that will save on postage, won't it? It Absolutely will, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Well, Not what fixed. A what a wonderful ride by Kim Little there. Again, we will get confirmation. I think it was maybe Situ who was second, but a real close run dragged to the line. Some of the, some of the you have to have a word with him about his power, though. 16 watts a kilogram for the last 300 metres. Yeah, I think he's going to be I'm very impressive. pleased with that, Kim. He's done a lot of Zwift racing over the last year, but I don't think he's taken too many wins, so he'll be very pleased to have taken mm. this one that's broadcast live. We've got a special guest coming in. Have to we? The, to the, the booth. Simon Richardson, disappointed ah, here he to, is. Get, to essentially get his entry returned. There will be a rematch, but Si, not as sweaty as you'd hoped. No, not as sweaty hey, as usual I mean, it was just, There were just so many people trying to log on. I just know, I mean, in a way, what an amazing problem to have, the fact that what? there are too many people, thanks, too many people entering your race. Logistically, organising a race for 1,100 people is probably quite difficult. So, uh, and I you've been imagine. properly tapering for this event. I mean, I I've gone through some psychological sort of work with you as well. You got your hair right. Everything was just... Perfect, wasn't it? But alas. Yeah, I spent a long time prepping the bike this afternoon. All of us in tip-top condition, so uh, I'm going to have to do something later. And it, yeah, are. if you're wondering why Sai is still in his kit resplendent here, it is because he carbo-loaded before the race, and he wants to get that weight off him before he goes to bed. So he will be going out and do some training in the very, well, soon, won't you? On Basically, the way back. yeah. Well, here's confirmation of the top three. I already know that your mate Kim Little took the victory. Uh, in second place was the Canadian Brett Bonifazi, okay. and in third place was Jay Turek. So there is your top well, three. Well, if we give second place a GCN phone cover yep. when he's out on the riding on the open road in the rain, and third place you get a GCN ass saver. So very well done to all can't, of you. Can't you have a bottle as well as an ass saver, for crying out loud? I reckon you have a bottle as well. You're getting two things, mate. No, no it's just an ass saver. Lads, it looked like a great race. It, it was, uh, I mean, it really was exciting at the sharp end, wasn't it? Some of the numbers at the sharp end were, well, eye-watering. Really? Yeah. I choked on me nuts. <laughs> Crikey, man. It was that ridiculous. Okay. Fair, it's almost just as well that I wasn't there then, I suppose. Indeed. <laughs> but I, I just can't <laughs> wait for a rematch. You also wasted some beer, which was worse. I did. Oh, I could take him choking. Laptop don't, only don't just made it. Don't waste beer. But uh, no, loads of people have been watching it. It's, it's Fantastic, but yeah, at the sharp end, I mean, there's the quality of the riding at the sharp end for 40, nearly 40 minutes of racing. That was pretty serious. Yeah, you, you need to put some work in. Really, I'm gonna so. go do some training. I'll see yeah. you. Off, off you go. Well, you should probably wrap the, the broadcast side. up for now. But if you want some more content, if you head to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash GCN, if you would like to see Cy Richardson racing Jens Vogt, do a search on there because it's very much worth watching. And we've also got plenty of other Zwift videos, including our previous race. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back with you soon, hopefully next time with Cy racing. At least he's got some more time to train now. He certainly has. Thanks for watching.